Hi, I'm Dr. David Jacobson. I'm the chief of the Division of Blood and Marrow Transplantation at Children's National. Hope everybody's doing well today. I'm going to be talking for a few minutes about graft versus host disease. So what is graft versus host disease, which we'll call GVHD, and who is at risk? So GVHD can occur in any allogeneic transplant, so any transplant where you're receiving cells from another individual, and it occurs when the new T cells or the immune cells from the donor attack your body. The new T cells are attacking the recipient's body and uh, can launch an attack. And how is this manifested? It can be manifested by inflammation in different parts of the body. So the most common area is the skin, and it can be anything from a very mild, simple, itchy rash to something a lot more severe, like with the blisters all over the body. GVHD can also affect the abdomen, the GI tract, by causing abdominal pain and diarrhea, and it can also affect the liver. In its most chronic forms, graft versus host disease can also affect other areas of the body, such as the eyes causing eye dryness, the mouth causing a sensitivity, and the joints causing difficulty moving certain joints. The acute form can occur early on after transplant in the first few months, and the chronic form can occur six to 12 months after transplant, but sometimes it later. And I think what's really important is that we will do everything possible. If you're starting to have symptoms of graft versus host disease, we will do everything possible to make sure that it is graft versus host disease and not something else such as infection before starting treatment. In terms of who is at risk, everybody that gets an allogeneic transplant or a transplant from someone else is at risk, but patients that receive an HLA identical transplant from a sibling are at the lowest risk, and patients that receive a mismatched transplant are at higher risk. So the greater the mismatch, the higher the risk, and the older the patient and the older the donor, the higher the risk of graft-versus-host disease. So how do we manage graft-versus-host disease? There's prevention and then there's treatment. The best thing is uh, not to have graft-versus-host disease. And uh, to avoid graft-versus-host disease, we give immunosuppressive therapy, medications to suppress the donor's immune system in your body. This traditionally goes for about six months. Nowadays, we are doing something very novel, which is a manipulation of the stem cell graft before they're infused into your body. And we can get rid of a lot of the T cells that cause graft versus host disease. So a number of our patients are receiving transplants without needing immunosuppressive therapy, which is a really exciting. Your transplant team will design a transplant protocol specific for your uh, child, depending on uh, the donor. If graft-versus-host disease does occur, there's a lot of different treatments that can be offered. The first line therapy is uh, steroids. Nowadays, there's been a number of different therapies that have also been approved should steroids not work. So the name of one of those is a uh, ruxolitinib. We also offer another therapy called extracorporeal photophoresis, where we can treat graft versus host disease without causing such severe immunosuppression. That is the goal here, because when we use a lot of immunosuppression, the graft versus host disease may go away, but the risk of infection goes uh, up. So your transplant team will recommend the best option 
available for you, you or your child, should you develop graft versus host disease. It's really been a pleasure talking to you about graft versus host disease today. And please let us know if you have further questions. Thank you.